Okay. Good day to one and all. This is Dr. Sivaram of Inoindices.com. I'll be presenting the Asian Session Live Market Analysis and the Forecast webinar. Today, that is on 30th of May, between 5 and 5.30 GMT, explaining the expected market moves during this period, 30th May to 3rd of June. So here you will be able to see that the month is getting over. The month of May is getting over and the month, new month, June starts in this particular week. So whenever you come across a week of this nature, the market is expected to be very, very volatile. So we have to be very careful. <clears throat> we cannot do position trade. We can only do swing trades. <clears throat> Either way, they could make very quick downward or the upward move. So you should be prepared for that. And you have to necessarily use the hedge order to limit the risk so that during either way moves of the market, you will be able to really capture good profit. Now, I'll be explaining the session wise forecast during this webinar from Monday to Friday, what is expected to happen, and also the levels in which the currencies are expected to swing during this week. I'll explain. Besides, I'll also do the market reading how it has to be done by noting down the initial lows and the highs around 330 GMT and then subsequently compare from time to time the current market conditions so that you will be able to really understand whether the market is going on the upside or on the downside tracking the type of moves they are doing it in the market so besides i'll also explain the trading strategy how it is going to limit the risk and maximize the profit. My contact details are given here, doctor at the rate of i-noindices.com is the email ID. And if you want to contact me through Skype chat, then I know indices at hotmail.com. Then my website address is www.i-noindices.com, I-K-N-O-W, I-N-D-I-C-E-S.com. So my website is there since 1999 and I am giving the forecast and from 2001, soon after the FX trade became a functional portal, I have been associated. So I am very glad that I am able to contribute to that of the small traders who are not in a position to subscribe for any of the forecasts, but still they want to do trades and earn the last money for that my trading system i had developed it and i am giving it with the help of webinars so that those who are interested will be able to really get the expected market moves without any payment of money and once you know you can use it for your as a guidance and then based on that you can develop the trading strategy see ultimately what is more important is besides the forecast we need to read the market from time to time because <clears throat> the volume can vary from time, time to time when the volume is low during japanese session market might be making small swing during the european session when the volume increases market might shows a little more volatile move then during the u.s session initially the volume might be very high because all the people will be participating in the market and suddenly the volume might dwindle because many of the traders would have closed their positions and they may not be interested to take a fresh position. Then the volume might dwindle. So depending upon the time frame, based on the variations with regard to the volume, which is coming to that of the market, the volatility are going to be determined. So if a data release is during that of the prime time, then the volatility will be very high. If it is late hours, then probably the volatility may not be very big. This is what you need to understand. So every time you should not think that the market will react for non-farm payroll or ECB press release in a very similar way, because each time it can vary depending upon the volume and also depending upon the traders developing the market sentiment so from time to time we have to fine tune our 
<coughs> forecast using the market reading. So in this market reading, we try to find out the intentions of the players following their type of moves they are doing it. So on 8th of June, I'll be giving a webinar tracking the forex market together for three hours. So 8 to 11 GMT. Then I'll track the market along with you so that you will be able to really see how my tracking has to be done. And then later on, I will show by your session the results of such tracking trades so that we'll be able to understand how market reading is vital besides the forecast. So in that market reading, we need to combine the trading strategy so that we'll be able to really see that we are not trapped by that of the sudden moves of the market because most of the traders lose their account or lose the money because of sudden events or sudden breakout moves and such moves become unexpected. So what the players do is create the market sentiment when the traders feel that the going is very good and then commit more positions then suddenly they give a breakout and or a release of a rumor or they just give an interpretation per, pertaining to that of the envisaged event and then suddenly reverse the market and then the traders get trapped vulnerably so for that if you use the hedge order to limit the risk you'll be able to really capture the profit on either way volatile moves of the market especially during that of the month end and the new month beginning time <clears throat> now this is the focus slide for that of the week 30th of may to 3rd of june so it is a month end and the new month beginning time the market is expected to be very volatile and then quick crises are also expected to happen so each session is given with regard to the timings so you can take the position during the early part of the session and close it during the late session so the first one and a half hours is the early session. The last one and a half hours is the late session. In between is the mid session. So during the mid session, the players will be handling the crosses. And during the early and the late session, they will handle the majors. So accordingly, you have to develop your trading ideas and take the position and try to close it within the session so that you will be able to consistently earn money without following the timing if you're simply following the levels and entering to the market then you may be your patience might be tested you might be expected to hold the position for a longer period and probably when they make a small dip also you become jittery and close the position later on find that you could have held the position this is what happens with many of the traders sometimes they hold the positions and then the market goes against them for a few more days and a few more uh, pips on the downside then they become afraid then they take a decision it's better to close the position when the position is not making profit initially for a few hours then later on they try to take a position the market might go against and immediately they close the position and see that and assume that they will be able to pick it up at the lower level but the market suddenly reverses and goes up so in order to avoid such uncertainties the only method by which you will be able to restrict the risk is hedging so if you use the hedge order you can limit the risk and in the event if it is hedged you can watch for 10 to 30 minutes and if the hedging is not making profit you can close and keep another hedge the hedging is making profit for 10 to 30 minutes then you understand the market is going against keep stop at entry in the hedge and then try to allow them to take the market anywhere they want so that you don't lose your usable margin and then when the market reverses your hedge will be closed, you will stop at entry, and then the market will move in your favor, you will be able to earn. So that sort of trading strategies are very vital besides the forecast and the market reading. 
so that 100% will be able to earn money from that other market. It is not the chance my forecast is working 60%, 70%. And there is of no use of talking like that. Even if the forecast is accurate with regard to 99.9%. .9 and in the event, if you take the position on that 0.01%, and that position makes a huge loss, whatever you have earned is small trades following that other forecast might be just obliterated or just evaporated by that of one big wrong trade. So ultimately, we need to act like a professional, not based on our sentiments. Only then we'll be able to consistently earn money from that other market. Now, this is the expected market moves for this particular week. The session wise, it is given. So today, 30th of May, dip and firm up is expected. They are slowly firming up after making an initial dip in the case of Euro and GBP and also Australian dollar now. So all the numerator currencies are showing red negative net change and the denominators are showing green positive net change indicating that they are all making the USD gaining move. And among that, USDN is the one which has gained maximum about 80 pips. So, what the players intend to do, they will gain the levels initially in the case of USDN and hold high, then subsequently rise Euro and GBP, thereby the end crosses will go up. So, you have to understand their tricks and accordingly trade so that you will be able to trade without market fear. And for that, you need to understand from time to time which which pair they are handling it, in what way they are doing it. A simple method to understand is this currency which has made more than 40 pips initially, between the high and the low is the currency that they are handling. To start with, euro is they are not handling, yen they are handling, which has made more than 40 pips spread between high and low because it is Japanese session. And in the case of GBP also, they are simply consolidating. And here also CHF, they are consolidating. Then in the case of Kandi and dollar, they made suddenly a quick upward move and they are making a spread of more than 40 pips. And also in the case of Australian dollar, they made more than 40 pips spread between the high and the low. So in such currencies, you focus and try to take, whenever they are making a dip, not preaching the low for more than 30 minutes during the earlier the late session you commit a buy position you'll be able to book profit by end of the session or by the early part of the next session and if they make a rise and stop cutting the high then you can take a sell then they will be able to will be able to book profit on the downside move following that but now they are doing the lower level middle level consolidation with either way stop ones and currently holding market near that of the low set for the day. So it is advisable to do buy and sell trades in all the currencies. And tomorrow, 31st, they are expected to make a swing and slide and then swing and rise move during European and the US session. And 1st of June, they are expected to make a rise from up and the rise as a consistent gain. Then on 2nd, you come across the ECB press conference. So I'll be presenting a, a spike trade call webinar before and after that of the event. So around 11.30 GMT, I'll try to give the uh, trade calls, how exactly you can make use of the volatility during you know, the ECB press conference and then make quick money. So after that, they are expected to make a very quick rise and then you can do a buy and sell trade and then subsequently they are expected to gain more levels. Then on third, <coughs> they are expected to make a swing and slide again because people will be expecting non-form payroll performance and everybody will say that you know, US dollar is going to be the king all the time and suddenly you will find the non-form payroll might be more than expected, then they will simply say it is a risk appetite so, and then gain the levels in the case of Euro and GBP. And this time again, I'll be giving a webinar before that of the non-form payroll on Friday, a spike trade call. 
and subsequently i'll review the call during that of the european session so that when i whenever the market is very very active many people suggest that don't trade let the market settle and then you can commit position but after the market settle if we commit position the market is not making any move and so when the market is making volatile move when the people become more uncertain the market fear grips and automatically you find then they say that better avoid rather than telling anything but if you read the intentions of the player you know very well such volatile moves are being made by that of the players because you and i cannot go and move the market using our online trading platform only in the banks they can do it and such whips or moves even they do we should be able to find out what their intention is there comes our quick wittedness and then we follow the false move the players and then commit position but still to avoid risk we use the hedge order to limit the risk and then if it is hedged we handle the hedge so that we continuously participate in the trade in the, they make big volatile move on either side we may do either way trading or booking profit on the downside as well as on the upside but when they make an upside upward spike and we simply move hedge to that of stop at entry and then try to maximize the profit using a trailing stop in the upward during the upward move of the market so ultimately if you plan before that of the event you don't get the surprise so get rid of the market surprise then you find the market gear fear goes off then you are in a position to really trade well and people might think that you are aggressive or you are taking high risk and things like that it is not the question of high risk or aggressive it is a question of understanding there are some sportsmen who might be doing the high risk stunts and it doesn't mean that they are taking high risk but they know the intricacies how they have to handle it then they are able to do it at ease and how it, they get it it is not by luck it is by practice so we need to forcibly see there are many people who know before that of the data release they close their eyes and because they are not able to accept the volatile moves and they do not want to see that account is closed in such a situation then you try to take a position in a demo trading platform and try to see how exactly you are performing and then later on we can do it in the live account it is very similar to the of developing any skill set so any skill set you have to develop only by practice and learn the intricacies and the techniques involved and you try to learn it then you find that you trade like a professional the next week you find it will be the first week of june 6th to 10th and during that time the monthly trend reversal is expected to happen and this time around the market is expected to make a very aggressive gain during the month of june now these are all the levels in which the currencies are expected to swing in this week so you know from 1.11 to 1.1525 area and gbp from 1.646 to 1.5075 and usdn from 110.25 to 114.75 you can see so that slowly they are going higher in the case of usdn and you might think that correspondingly euro is dropping that is why yen is going but gbp also they are rising so if you carefully watch you can understand how they are making the contrary move by creating the confusion to the other traders and in the case of chf 9825 could be the low 1.1025 could be the high during this week and usd cad they are making either way moves and they are expected to show the low gain 1.2925 area and 1.3150 area as the high as a consolidation and here's australian dollar from 7150 they are expected to go to 7375 and you know that we saw australian dollar reaching 78 from there they had dropped it as i explained that they make such a drop and gain again so that they are able to sustain australian dollar below that of the parity 
only during multi-year trend reversal they had taken australian dollar above parity afterwards they have been holding it at a lower level so in order to do that what they do is so gbb for example it has been gaining but australian dollar has lost along with it of euro then again they will gain the levels in the case of australian dollar at that time euro and gbb will also gain so that way they will just go continuously high in the case of gbp whereas australian dollar they gain about 200 pips then lose 100 pips gain 200 lose 100 that way they will try to move it so that ultimate net gain might be less when compared to that of gbp or euro now coming to that of the market reading so i noted down the initial lows and the highs around 330 gmt and the levels are given here 1.1098 is the low in the case of you 1.115 is the high they are not breached the lower the high in the case of gbb 1.46 and 1.4628 1.4628 they just breached it and went up to 1.4631 come down below that of 1.4628 so a brief upward stop and, and then they come down in the case of vn they just breached the high 111.03 and went up to 111.19 and holding above for more than one hour so they wanted to gain the levels first in the case of usdn as i explained then subsequently during that of the european and the us session they will start gaining the levels in the case of euro and gbp then in the case of chf they are just they have gained more and dropped less that sort of moves they are doing it so that they are consolidating around 0 0.99 and they are expected to So four two they had just breached and went up to nine nine five two, and they are holding it. So they could gain the level in the case of yen as well as USD CH as the denominators are expected to gain. But GBP they are consolidating here also they are consolidating. Subsequently they are expected to gain. They are again missing. It is one point three zero two six which is the low and 1.3093 they just formed the initial high and that was also not breached so they are holding usd cat and australian dollar 0 0.7149 is the low 7188 is the high so they are not handling the commodity pairs they are primarily handling the yen and the yen crosses so after making big moves in the case of yen and yen crosses they will come to the top of the majors as a sequential move will come across the sequential trend reversal moves to happen in this particular trend reversal time the sequence will be the commodity <coughs> crosses and the commodity pairs then the yen crosses and the yen and then subsequently the majors and the european crosses that is how they will handle the market now coming to that of the trade recommendations I kept the buy order near that of the low at the asset 1.1098, which is not filled. And in the case of Euro GBB, also 1.46, I kept it, which is not filled. And also in the case of Yen, I kept 110.37, that is also not filled. So during that of the European session, again, we can see what they are setting it. And then subsequently, Take the buy position in the case of euro and cheap b and later on we can take the buy position when they make a dip in the case of usdn just to give a trigger for euro and gbp to go up and they will pretend as if they are going to do the usd weakening move and after some time they will gain the levels in the case of usdn also so follow that and try to take the position these are all the timings of the market and those who are not familiar with that you can make a note of it or take screenshot otherwise the webinar is recorded and it will be available in a fixed rate you can refer to it later note down the details the japanese european the u.s session and the gap time between the sessions 
and also how exactly they handle the various pets are explained. Now, if you've got any question, you can answer to the. Uh, you can ask me the questions. I will be willing to answer to those questions. And this week, today I have given the forecast for the week. So Friday on third June, I'll review the forecast. So Asian Central Live Market Analysis review will be on Friday. Then on 2nd, that is Thursday, 11, 11 to 11.30 GMT, I'll explain the spike trade calls for the June ECB event. So June ECB event, I will give the pre-data release time, the call, and then 13 to 13, 15 for 15 minutes, I'll explain to you how exactly I've taken the position, how the positions have performed, and what trading strategy I have used in order to earn money from the other market. Those things will be explained during the other post data event. Then on third, along with that of the Asian webinar, so uh, on third G Friday, I'll be giving between 5 and 5.30 GMT, the Asian session webinar. Then followed by that 11 to 11.30 GMT, I'll give them pre-data release spike trade calls for non-form payroll. Then subsequently in the US session, 14 to 14, 15 GMT, post-data release, I'll explain to you the results and the outcome of the trades. So here you come across, these are all the prime events. <coughs> So during the prime event time, I'm going to take the positions and explain to you how such positions can really capture the profit, either following the forecast norm or following the trading strategy. Ultimately, there is vital that we need to make money during such quick moves in the market. So I don't see any question coming up. Is there any question? Kindly ask me. I'll show the focus slide. So those of you join late probably can take a screenshot or it will be available in a fixed rate for your future reference during this week. My following webinar details are given here. Okay, there is a question from Hassan. The level zero expected to reach was around 1.12 for the last three weeks, but it is did not. Yes, zero has not gained or 1.13 or 1.14. <clears throat> they are just consolidating it and expecting some events to happen and then later on spike it up and they are expected to do this in this particular week sometimes what they do is in order to handle the crosses like euro gpb cross in order to drop euro gpb cross massively as a profit booking and buy it again they're just holding euro and gaining big in the case of gpp so these are all the strategies they do to position themselves in the huge quantity at the lowest level so for that they do it and we need to read it and we should not become afraid and obviously they will not drop euro or gbp in a very big way they will only do about each time about 50 pips correction in order to create the fear and then go up again so how they are done it in the case of vn you know how they have started gaining how they are done it in the case of CHF, you know, now they started gaining. And you might think that they are all showing USD weak, gaining more. But Euro and GBB, they will gain and as a market surprise. There comes the skill set of the players. So we can only envisage what they intend to do, but practically they handle both the majors as well as crosses. So we do not know the pending open positions of the players, uh, I mean, of the traders. Besides that of the spot market traders, there are other positions like the uh, 
features and the options and forward covers of the exporters and the importers and such positions if the players know very well and they forcibly wait till such time for the options and the uh, forward covers to expire with a loss so when such positions expire with the loss the players make huge profit without that so ultimately they are interested in making money so wherever they come across money earning opportunity accordingly they make the moves and we do not know their name or we do not know them personally so the only way is possible is to read their intentions following their market moves the knowledge is correct It's Friday, Ellen's speech for the rate hike is the reason. See, each time they will give you different interpretation. And, you know, uh, before and after the event, they talk about it. They know very well the traders have got a very sharp memory. So they just talk about it. But after tomorrow, day after, they will not talk about Ellen's speech. They will talk about non farm payroll or ACB press conference, etc. So they, from time to time, they just give this sort of interpretation. But actually, what they had done it today, week beginning, they just made a brief dip in the case of Euro and GDP, and then they just wanted to gain the level. They are doing the usual strategy, but we only assume oh, it could be due to Ellen's speech, or it might be due to the data release, etc. Ultimately, you find that they make up and down move. For making an upward move, making a downward move, each time they give different interpretations. So you think, or we are bound to think that such interpretations are vital for an upward or a downward move. And then we try to follow. So this is actually nothing but a distraction for that of the traders. So when we envisage non from payroll, envisage ACP press conference, we commit light. We don't take much position. We want to get the clarity based on the, uh, the fundamentals and then later on commit positions. But if the market is not manipulated, what we are doing is correct. But if the market is manipulated and when you think that okay the fundamental says that usd is going to gain then you try to commit some sell positions in the case of euro and jvb they gain very quickly and vulnerably trap the traders telling either technically the market is oversold so it has bounced back or it might be that this particular data is discounted that is why the market is gone they give different type of interpretations so they create the market sentiment and then when the traders commit positions act against it of their expectations so that the traders continue to develop surprise and continue to lose money once you become once you develop the market fear then automatically the fear will induce you to cut loss the position. Then you expect more gain in USDN. Yes, USDN is expected to gain more. Every time if you watch carefully, see, when you do the chart study individually of different currencies, then you don't identify the how the players are handling that market. But unfortunately, people are looking to that of the coincidences suppose usdn is gaining and dow jones is gaining then simply they will say okay following dow jones usdn is also gaining that sort of coincidences they try to interpret as correlations coincidences are different from that of correlations because correlation should be always a perfect correlation forever but they are all only for a brief period so they are all coincidences and not correlations so when we are guided that way to looking for correlations then automatically what happens when they gain level in the case of usd and immediately people think that okay it is going to be usd gaining more you know and gpp are going to drop more then commit sell positions then they trap the traders so 
the players are here to trap the traders that we need to understand and for that what is more important to follow is they know from time to time what is the prevailing volume in the market because they are handling the banks and they know the volume but we do not know the volume so based on the volume they make the moves in the market they cannot keep the market silent or static if they keep the market silent then people might think that it is a holiday so let us not commit any position then the players will not earn any money so they have to bring in the volatility about five ten pips swing every time they have to show so that it is like a gambling den when they make move we feel like betting it and they induce the trigger, the, uh, the urge to go in for a gambling the trigger and then subsequently we commit the position. Then later on sometime we rip and you know, just wait it for another 10 minutes before committing it. That's all part of the human uh, reactions to this. And ultimately what they want is they want traders to commit more and more positions and after that sentiment is created well established when the traders have committed position and the traders are also given small profit so they fearlessly commit more position suddenly reverse the market and trap them so it is like the las vegas gambling then how they are attracting you first time you go and better you will get 20 dollars then you feel that okay this 20 dollars i'll try to gamble with and you commit it and you will say that no no you are really lucky you can commit hundred dollars you will be able to earn then later on you find that you lose your hundred dollars any other question okay then I take this opportunity to thank FX Trade for the facilities provided to us in the webinar and you people for your kind listening and coming for the webinars. Please come back again on Thursday and I'll give the spike trade calls for the ECB press conference and also on Friday the Asian session a review of the forecast what I have given it today and followed by that the non-form payroll spike trade calls. So wish you all happy trading. Try to get rid of the market fear by understanding the market more accurately. Wish you all the best. See you on Thursday.